Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm so excited today. This is uh, craziness. I have a long, long time friend in the house. We went to elementary school together, middle school and high school. And I happened to see uh, a clip on the news of this guy doing this incredible fundraiser for Ukraine. And I'm like, oh my God, this is Jonathan McFarlane. I'm like, of course, this human is doing something good for this world. (laughs) So I am so excited. We're going to talk about pallets for Ukraine. Jonathan, welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. Yeah, thanks, Kristen. It's uh, it's good to be on your show and good to talk to you again after quite a while. Craziness. <clears throat> it's it's a sign of the times when you haven't talked in like I don't even know X amount of years, and then you get like a Facebook message like, "Hey, what are you doing? Come on my podcast." <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, and I I'm a big podcast fan. I listen to podcasts all the time. So when I when you mentioned that you were doing a podcast, I, I was I'm all in. I, I love podcasts. Love everything about them. Hey, I think our generation it's hit and miss. You either end you're into it. Or you're not at all. And I was actually not at all for a while. And then I saw like how uncuffed the unhandcuffed the platform was. I'm like, oh, we're definitely into this. So I'm glad you have like ethos in the game. You probably actually have more knowledge in podcasting than I do, but we're out here learning. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not usually on the podcast. I'm mostly listening to them, but um, you know, this is, yeah, this is great. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to, to talk to you about what's going on in Ukraine and, and about uh, everything that you're doing too. Yeah, well, let's let's do let's jump in. Ukraine has been a hot and heavy topic, justifiably so. Uh, we are going to talk about what Jonathan's got going on and how his fund re- fundraising efforts are happening right here in Denver. I'm going to break down some information about just logistic geographical stuff of Ukraine. I know it's been a while since I've been in uh, geography class, so I really had to like brush up on some things. Even though I'm consuming the news when I was doing some you know quick research on what's going on to share some s- statistics, I was surprised by some of the stuff I read. So I want to get us a little bit more familiar with the country some of the impacts of war, and then we're going to tell you how you can directly get involved, what Jonathan's doing and where to find them. So let's, I'm just going to give a quick preview of Pallets for Ukraine. They are, they've made donations to NGOs that are assisting the humanitarian crisis, but that's not enough. Pallets for Ukraine is our avenue to multiply our efforts, allow others to show their support and provide help to those that need it most. Pallets for Ukraine is a family project started by a grandpa, a son, and a granddaughter in Denver, Colorado. They collect pallets, disassemble them, and turn them into Ukrainian flag yard signs. The signs then are sold for with 100% of the money going directly to several different charities working in the Ukraine. All materials are donated, so every dime goes back to the cause. Um, the only cost is our time, which they are proud to give. And the three costs are the three charities that they are working with are International Rescue Committee, Project Dynamo, and then Airbnb. So I'll give you the stuff at the end. But Jonathan, why don't you give us your take on how this sparked your interest, why you started it, and how it's going? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, like most people, when they saw the actual invasion happen, there was kind of like this disbelief. And then anger and like sadness and trying to figure out how this can happen in the modern world i mean it's it's two developed countries one invading the other it's it's uh that hasn't happened in a very long time um not that there's not been wars and conflicts but usually it's uh, lately it's been more internal like a civil war revolution you know that kind of thing um so this was unique and um i i didn't really know what to do i mean I made some some contributions to a few different charities, but that didn't really feel like that was enough. Um, so my dad, uh, who's he's got lots of interesting hobbies. One of them is collecting flags. Um, he's got like seven or eight different flag poles on the side of his house, so it kind of looks like a it. ship, with like all the flags on. It. Yeah. So, anyways, when this happened, he went to the store to buy a Ukrainian flag to hang and show support. Um, And he got the last one at the store. And the guy said, um, it's not just here. I mean, you can't buy Ukrainian flags anywhere. So my dad, who's a bit of a woodworker, was sort of like, well, we can 
figure out a way to to make that happen. And uh, I don't know why pallets, why he got that idea to use pallets. I think because they're everywhere and you can kind of generally get them for free. Um, easy to work with that kind of stuff. Yeah. But uh, he just told me, he's like, I'm going to chop up this pallet and uh, color match the Ukrainian flag, buy some paint, paint, some, you know, make some little yard signs. And in my head, um, it was kind of like, yeah, we'll throw throw some of these signs in a wagon. I'll take my daughter and we'll kind of go door to door and maybe we can raise a few hundred dollars. That was sort of like the the experience that I had. And, and I was still better than what we were currently doing. So that was fine. Um, but I, I posted on Nextdoor that we were doing this and I started getting requests from all the different news channels in Denver. And it just sort of took on a life of its own. Um, and so now we've raised uh, $18,500 and we've produced over 500 signs. So hopefully people will start seeing them around Denver. I mean, they're all over the city and um, we've funneled all of that money to the charities you mentioned. So uh, it's empowering, you know, to, to take a small idea like this and really turn it into something that has, we think, a big impact. Absolutely. And how exciting to know that out of something so organic, and I love that your daughter got to see this firsthand and is having this positive experience in her life about you guys being proactive and knowing what to do. Cause like you, I was consuming the news and, and you're just helpless. And I've worked quite a bit in the nonprofit world. So when you're giving to certain nonprofits, it's hard. Cause you know, a lot of times, a lot of the money isn't going back to the cause and there's all these, you know, smoke and mirrors in the mix. So it's, it's amazing that you guys are hundred percent give back and you're donating your time. But just taking that step and being proactive, I'm so proud of your dad for kind of creating this and going with the pallet idea. We've got not only like activism, but sustainability <laughs> using materials. That's true, yeah. yeah. So there's a couple like really big plays here. Um, and I, I'm, what a bright light to see society so like excited about something and to naturally take it to the next level. Like I didn't know if people are busy with their lives or that, you know, COVID's still happening and there's inflation and like, there's a lot happening in people's personal lives. I don't know how we are as Americans um, or Canadians, like how concerned we are really with the rest of the world. So I think that's gotta be super inspiring to see like this intentional interest and in people wanting to get involved. Yeah, it really is. Um, and there's a, I, I don't know the exact quote, but Mr. Rogers actually said, when something bad happens, you look for the helpers. And that can help you feel better because I think it's it's um, selfishly it's it's a mental health issue even for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, seeing these things happening and feeling helpless like really kind of crushed me a little bit at first. You know, I just like horrible things, and you feel like you can't do anything about it. Um, so this was this was also a way for myself to just sort of accept not accept but um, not be in despair every day, all day about what's going on over there. Uh, it, you know, like by doing something, you, f you feel, you feel empowered, you feel, um, you know, it just, it just helps alleviate some of that pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that's a big part of it. And for other people too, you know, people, people have been volunteering and helping to paint signs and things like that. And I think the same thing for them, they're just looking for a, a way to do more and feel like they are helping a terrible, terrible situation. So well said. It, it's true that um, I think there are people that really do want to get involved, but you just don't know what to do. And I think in my first correspondence with you, I'm like, I can't believe you're doing this. this is so great. I sat there and I felt some of those similar emotions to you where it's, you're watching like strollers set out as a display showing all the children. that yeah. were And then you just go on to your workout or your job. And like, it's like nothing happened And that internal right. guilt and thought process. I mean, it just feels so inhumane to walk on and go on to the next thing. And that's, I know that's not the person that I want to be. And I think even those, that little thought process carries on into every other angle of our lives. Uh, so I really do commend Mr. Rogers for yeah. joining the helpers. And the Smart guy. To be one. Yeah. Yeah. All we needed to know what we learned when we were in like what first or second grade. I know. Right. <laughs> if only I had been taking notes back then, which saved a lot of time. <laughs> true, But we knew Michael Jackson songs, right? That's true. We both, <laughs> uh, both are admirers of Michael Jackson. Yeah. 
So I want to give a little background on Ukraine. Like I said, it's been a minute since I was in geography class, but when I was really thinking about it and, and understanding, you know, why is this country even getting attacked? I, like you said, I can't, can't believe it's, you know, it's 2022 and we're dealing with stuff that happened, you know, so many years ago, like, how's this even possible with strategic partnerships and, you know, things in play to like protect countries and, you know, money and whatever. So I, I really wanted to dig in. And this is a quick 411 on Ukraine. It's a country in Eastern Europe. It's the second largest country in Europe and Russia, which borders on the East and Northeast. Ukraine shares borders with Belarus to the North, Poland and Slovakia and Hungary to the West, Romania and Mold Moldova to the South and has a coastline along the Sea of Azov, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, and the Black Sea. It covers about 230,000 square miles with a population of 40 million. The nation capital is Kyiv, which you've been hearing a lot about in the news. Um, official language is Ukraine and everyone is for the most part uh, fluent in Russian. They've been independent since 1991, and their current president, Voldemort uh, Zelensky, I will have to say, I think has been remarkable in this process. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Um, I, I, I don't know what the right way is, but I'm pretty impressed with how he's handling it all. Yeah, me too. I mean, starting from even before the actual invasion happened, um, I mean, he's just, he's a true leader that just sort of... Uh, Rose, rose to the occasion, I guess you could say. It's not like he, when he became president, I think it was two or three years ago, whatever. He, it's not like he expected to be a wartime president. You know, this is just something that happened while he happened to hold the reins of his country. And I, I mean, what an asset, you mm -hmm. know, for, for the Ukrainian people to have him um, kind of managing and being the spokesperson for them um, during this this conflict, I, I I continue to be impressed just about every time I I see him speak uh, or or listen to uh, something where that's been recorded with them. You know, I, I just uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to go down as a, a hero after all this is over. I certainly agree. I, I you know I'm sure you know as a parent or any leadership role that you're in in your life, I think there is one little silver lining is that if you do reflect on how he's handling this and the leadership within it and how we are in, as inspired as, you know, people that aren't even people of his country that like, dang, this is so impressive. He's staying in it. He's staying out there. He's proactive. He's on the phone all the time. And you also got to remember this dude was a comedian and an actor in right. another life. So this isn't like, a, a, you know, a million year po politician that's been in it. And this is turmeric and tequila, perfect example of like, you never know what, what skills people carry until you're truly tested and, and how they'll show up. But I'm just so truly impressed with who he is, how he's handling it. Um, and how optimistic it is. Like we're sitting here saying how hard it is to watch it and see what's going on. I can't even imagine how he's keeping his mental health and his faith together, being in the midst of it. Um, with all the weight really on his shoulder. So I'm with you. I think it's really a remarkable situation. And there, in my mind, there's no doubt he's going to go down in history. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear the quote uh, when the U S was basically offering him like, we can evacuate your family when this all started, he said, uh, I don't need a ride. I need ammo. Ugh. I mean, like you can't, that's so perfect. I think it's amazing. It is. I don't want to minimize it, but it seems like a Terminator, Terminator quote, but it's the thing is, it's not Hollywood. It's so authentically real. He bleeds it. And it's, I mean, it, it, it makes you contemplate going out there and fighting for him. I'm not kidding. Like it makes you be like, what else can I do? Um, yeah. so yeah, that's, that's amazing. I will I'll remember that. Uh, it it's, I think it's just so crazy this day and age, even for like for our president, you don't really know what's going to happen next. We didn't know about COVID. We don't know about what's going on. Um, you kind of just have to be ready for anything. So I'm very curious as time goes on, like what kind of people sign up or take on these roles and how that leadership is going to transpire because we are in such a state of the unknown on so many levels. Yeah. And I'm sure that a non-wartime president has all sorts of different types of stress that a wartime president mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have, but, or vice versa. But um, you just got to kind of imagine like the the needs of your people change so drastically when you're in the middle of a war like this one. Yeah. Um, you know, like we're talking about our gas prices going up. We're talking about things like, I don't know, access to early childhood education. And they're talking about survival, like yeah. water, food, power, shelter, you know, like you're the, the hierarchy of needs just shifts so dramatically from one to the other. Um, and I think a good leader, they rise to the occasion, you know, a really good leader just 
deals with whatever is thrown at them. Um, and yeah, that's, I think what we've seen. I agree. It's, it's a really good, obviously on a super watered down level, but metaphor for life. Cause like stuff just happens. You can't plan for, and you can't really be overly prepared. You just have to come at it. And I don't know, even having him in the back of your mind on your daily stuff, or if something comes at your family or whatever, I think even just knowing about his approach and being in a leadership role, like that can kind of keep your feet on the ground and your eyes straight. So you can show up accordingly as best you can. Definitely. Yeah. I'm with you. So I want to share a little bit on that note of the impacts of war. And I'm going to post all these links and references when I post the cast. This is from Statistia Research Department. Um, the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights uh, verified a total of 1,964 civilian deaths during Russia's military attack on Ukraine, on Ukraine as of April 13th, 2022. Of them, 161 were children. Furthermore, 2,613 people were reported to have been injured. However, the OHCHR specified that the real numbers could be higher. Um, I have no idea. I have no doubt that they are. Also, uh, Ukrainian refugees, uh, sorry, top 4 million, nearing 10% of the population. So as I noted the surrounding countries before, we have tons of refugees going into all these other countries that are trying to just get out and get out of the way. Um, some of the global impacts on Ukraine and the war on food and energy, this is another article I'll post, as many as 1.7 billion people, one third of whom are already living in poverty, are now highly exposed to disruptions in food, energy, and finance systems that are triggering increases in poverty and hunger. Uh, 36 countries count on Russia and Ukraine for more than half of their wheat imports, including some of the poorest and most vulnerable countries in the world. Oil prices are up more than 60% over the past year, accelerating the prevailed trends. The same goes for natural gas prices, which have risen 50%. Fertilized prices have more than doubled. As prices climb, so does hunger and uh, malnutrition, especially for young children. So th these all stood out to me because I had no idea that Ukraine was one of the poorest countries in Russia. As they were showing footage, and this is ignorant on my end, but, you know, the cities look beautiful things. It looked, you know, well put together. I didn't realize... Um, the, the extent of poverty. And on the flip side, I didn't realize how rich in resource it was. Hence, you know, exploiting the motive for Putin. It's always usually about money, but did you know about any of these things before you guys got involved or any of the backstory on Ukraine? Uh, you know, not a lot. Like I'd never been to that area. Um, so I, I think just like everybody else, when this happened or when there was sort of talk, this could happen, you kind of like read up and start trying to educate yourself a little bit more about what's going on. So no, I, I really had no idea and and then also had no idea the kind of impact that it would have on the rest of the world outside of Ukraine. You know, I mean, it, even the countries that are taking in refugees, like Poland, I think is taking like over 2 million, like almost half mm -hmm. of the refugees have gone to Poland. So you can even imagine the strain on that country trying to um, deal with and take care of an extra several million people that have no job, no food, no, you know, no shelter. Um, so the impact of this war is global and it, it only becomes more and more dire as time goes on, yeah. unfortunately. I, I agree. And I think that it's, I love that your daughter is in whatever capacity seeing how your reaction is happening to this, because I think our future generations will have similar things like this that happen and modeling the example of being proactive, being the helper, being in the mix is so critical because we don't really know what's happening next. So, so do you think that, you know, COVID could happen and then this is happening and we don't really know what's happening. So I, I'm so excited to have this conversation because I want people to see helpers like you and how they do it. So when the next thing comes, because it likely will, they know what to do when you guys, you know, your dad went to the store found out there was a demand for flags, which is so awesome. Uh, kind of had this process to put it together. What was step one for you to kind of further like formalizing this process? Like, how did you really kind of get it all together? Yeah. So um, when he started talking about making the flags out of pallets, uh, I had already been sending a lot of money to people in Ukraine through Airbnb. Um, but I realized that wasn't that you can't scale that very easily because you're literally going in like making one booking at a time. It's, it takes a long time and, and you kind of have to vet them to make sure it's not like a scammer on the other end. Mm -hmm. um, so, so when my dad started doing this and I made that post on next door, um, the second we got a request from Christian Lopez, she's on channel seven. I was sort of 
surprised, but realized really quickly, okay, I need to make this, I need to formalize this. I need to like set up a website, get a logo, a name and everything. Um, so I think that was, uh, let's see, on a Thursday, she reached out, like Christian Lopez from Seven reached out on Nextdoor. We set up an interview for Saturday on Friday and Friday night. I wrote all the content for the website, like had a friend late, late at night, send me over a logo he could create, um, launched the website, set up email, stuff like that. I mean, we did all that in a day wow. so that um, when Christian did her story, she could tell people where to go to, to learn more, where to go to, to donate or whatever. Um, and so it really happened really fast. Um, and the infrastructure that we set up really, really quickly so far has worked really, really well. Um, I'm really happy about that because initially, my, I, I mean, I don't know how to do this kind of stuff. I do now, but <laughs> so first, you do now. Yeah. I was just, I do now, yeah, but I was just going to have people just send me money on Venmo and then I was going to deliver the flags to them. <laughs> and I learned really quickly there was no way that was going to work. Um, for one, I mean, sending money to my own personal account feels sketchy. Yeah. I, I would be sketched out about that too. <laughs> and uh, and then delivering the flags, we learned immediately that that was too time consuming. Like we could not be driving all around the city doing that. Um, so, you know, my sister recommended this Give Butter platform. It's like a fundraising platform, um, kind of like GoFundMe, I, I suppose. And uh, I just started writing, just like writing all the content on the website. Friend came up with the logo. You know, it all just, it happened so fast and it has so far stood the test of time since we started. That's so amazing. And tell us really quick, like give us some of your background, like professionally or what kind of skills did you innately have or this kind of just put everything on track? Yeah, so I've been a marketer for a really long time. Um, I started in the marketing sort of field uh, unofficially in the mid 2000s and then more officially um, kind of at the like 2012, I would say. Um, and it, originally that was more in the fitness world. Um, like I worked for a lot of different supplement companies and worked with a lot of uh, professional bodybuilders. So it was really the extreme end of the fitness world. And then in 2016, I believe it was, I transitioned into the cannabis industry and have been working as a marketer in that industry since then. So um, a really good marketer, you know, can, has a good eye for design, even if they're not a designer and is a good communicator. I would say that's kind of like two of the important things. If you want to be a good marketer, you have to be maybe a good communicator is number one, you know? Um, so I, I'm a writer by education, I guess you could say. So, and I've been writing as long as I've been a marketer. So, I mean, that part was pretty easy, just kind of coming up with what describes what we're doing and, and why it's important on the website, that kind of thing. And then understanding a little bit about email marketing, um, uh, used to work in the news. So how to deal with news organizations and try to get them interested and get them to do more and so on. It's, uh, it's just kind of like a big combination of separate skills mm -hmm. that really came together in this one instance, I guess you could say. I love that. that. I mean, it's amazing. I'm not usually the most uh, religious person, but I always say on the podcast, God, universe, and Madonna, I'm a huge Madonna fan. Something kind of puts it all <laughs> together and like the energies formulate. So if you're out there and you're inspired to do something, or you're kind of sitting there, like I was like, I, I see this, I feel it. What the hell do I do? Maybe just do what you can and start there. Um, when I saw Jonathan, I'm like, well, I'll help however I can. But if you want to come on the podcast and you know, that's my thing, or maybe if you're a chef, you could, I don't know, whatever your angle is, I feel like you can find a way to contribute. Um, but even if you don't have the exact experience in what the, the duty calls, I think Jonathan's such a great example of you pull from whatever you do have and just make it work and then find your supporters. And usually that universe and Madonna will provide something to kind of keep this going. If it's, you know, in alignment and, and moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. I have not used Madonna in that fashion before, <laughs> but <laughs> I will remember that the next time I need to do something really religious, I'll, I'll remember uh, I got Madonna yeah. as well. <laughs> it's the whole, well, the parallels, like, you know, she did the, like a virgin video with the flaming cross and it wasn't about being sacrilegious. We won't unpack that now, but it's, if you get it, you get it. Um, but I think that's, it's, it's really great of what you guys have going on, how it's moving forward. I can't wait to see how this grows. Do you have ambition or plan to like take this to the next level or what's, what's kind of next for you guys? 
I don't really know. I mean, we, so we're, we're at 18,500 now. Um, I think we're really trying to get to that $20,000 mark. Um, there's something about that, that like, this feels like a significant amount of money. This feels like something big. So I think that is our most immediate goal. And then longer term, I mean, you know, we want to be put out of business. We want yeah. this to be over. We, we don't, it's not that we don't want to do this. We don't want to have to do this. Um, but we're going to keep going as long as we can, as long as people want to buy some flags and support um, what we're doing. Um, we had talked about, you know, we're just doing this in Denver because that's really, that's where we live and we can't really ship the signs for the flags. So we were talking about putting together like some instructions. So maybe people in other cities can try doing this themselves because it's, it's, it can be time consuming, but it's not difficult. Like it's not complicated to do. Um, so I can, I can see us um, doing that and trying to expand that way. But the idea is just multiplying your efforts, you know, not just the efforts of one person, like just me by myself couldn't have, there's no way I could have raised this amount of money, even a fraction of that. Um, the impact of my own work would be very limited. But when you put an idea like this together and you can inspire other people to contribute, you know, you can really magnify your, your goals. And so I don't know what the goals are past those couple of things. Um, I guess we'll kind of just see how it unfolds. Yeah. Well, I think we, as we grow up, you learn to like, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, but you get intentional about what you want, what you do, your goals, how you train, how you show up in life, your really, whatever, but really sometimes like opportunity just unfolds and you just have to go with it and stay in it and be open. So, um, I'm curious, I would love, I'm just going to put this out there. I would love if somebody heard this podcast in another state and reached out to you guys. And I was actually going to suggest, I hope you share this process more because I think people will want to do it and they'll just be like me, not knowing really what is the right next step or what can I do? And, and all they'd have to do is mimic what you guys have really started as incredible influencers. We'll say, um, yeah. <laughs> doing big that's things a new one for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've been called an influencer before. So, but, so that's, that's unique. I'll put that on my resume. <laughs> moving forward <laughs> that's unique we'll go that's unique is that's perfect that's like oh that's interesting that's like a warm like compliment ish um yeah. that's hilarious but i but i really do think if people can just kind of see this how they can kind of be like oh i can this can inspire something bigger i am curious i mean i do know a lot of your family but i love this kind of it came from your from your dad but tell me a little bit about like growing up like we're like you know giving back or like were these values instilled in you guys like what really inspired this step to take action uh, you know, I, I don't know that I could point to anything specific in my childhood other than being always reinforced to just be a good person. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no, um, it's not that we didn't contribute to charities or anything like that. I think as a family, we, we always did that, but, um, but this was something that really struck a chord with, with me and with my dad and, and kind of everybody else in the family. And, you know, uh, I think maybe some of that comes back to bullying a little bit. Um, wow i mean talk about the world's worst bully is yeah. putin uh, i mean there's the and i don't like bullies my dad doesn't like bullies um so i think maybe that had something to do that kind of sparked this effort but um it, i've been looking for ways to do more you know to contribute more before this in my personal life and support charities that i believe in and um so this happened i think at the right time in my life when I was younger, when I was mid twenties and even in my thirties, you know, you just kind of have a different mindset. It's for most people, it's really all about yourself. Mm -hmm. And as I've gotten older, um, that mindset has changed a little bit. And I'm, I'm thinking about like, when I'm not here, what kind of impact did I have on the world that I left behind or left me behind, I guess. Um, <laughs> And I want it to be a, a positive one. So for me, this has been an incredible experience, but it's not going to be the last thing I do like this. You know, I, I'm going to look for other ways I can help other things and, um, and continue to do things like this for the rest of my life. I mean, it really has been a life-changing kind of experience. 
that's right. It's really awesome. And I think that's a huge takeaway in this conversation. Clearly the priority is fundraising money, monetary efforts, and obviously awareness for Ukraine. In addition, I think if we're nurturing some of that purpose and like our tie to humanity on a larger level, down, you know, ripples down the road, I think we'll have more evolved humans. And I, and I think this will alleviate situations even happening like this. So some of that internal sense of purpose, K Alliance, my company, we work specifically now with mission driven companies and humans, meaning people aligning their passion and their purpose with their personal and professional pursuits. So there's a lot of words just saying like walking in their purpose, uh, because it's, you're working with a different mindset in a different kind of person, they get it on a different level. They're seeking something more. And I think once you can feel that and understand it, it changes everything you do in your life. Definitely. Is there any, is there anything else where this has specifically like sparked joy or changed the way you've done your daily routine or anything else just by giving back? Um, well, it, every time somebody emails the, you know, the info at Palace for Ukraine and says something nice, I mean, it makes me feel good. I, yeah. I, I know it's, it's, not, it's not about me. It's about supporting Ukrainians. But I, I got to say, like, when people are like, thank you, you did something really good. This is great. We were happy to support. I mean, it makes me feel personally, it makes me feel good. It, it sparks joy, like you're talking about. Um, so I think being a helper, like Mr. Rogers said, it's about helping, but it's also about yourself and feeling like you're having a positive impact on the world around me. And I got to say, I think so much of this comes back to my daughter. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Um, when she looks back at her dad, sorry. Oh. I want her to be proud. I hear you. Yeah, I want to set an example. Good for you. I, I hope I'm, I hope I'm doing that. Hey, well, Jonathan, you're good at Michael Jackson and you are a good dad. I really appreciate you going there because, <laughs> um, this is, I, I don't think in our society, we, you do something good and it's, it's like selfish to be like, here's how I feel, or this made me feel good. Or we minimize the impact of our immediate surroundings. Our parents don't let your soul cringe here, but like our parents are our first influencers and like how your behavior, like your words are meaningful. But like you think about our experience with our parents, the actions were big. We were, there's so many things we didn't understand. And when you think how large of a scope this problem is with Putin and this, how this can happen in 2022, it's so far out of our control, but what can we control? We control how we're showing up at our families and our communities, the way I walk down the street, the way I show up for this podcast. I mean, there's th those little things and our kids, I mean, this, I quite literally have this podcast for our young people to disrupt, you know, I say graceful disruption, disrupt all the BS that's going out there, but, it, but our kiddos are our future. And the importance of that, of what we're doing is critical, but the importance of what they see is everything. I and mean, when we have parents like you that just, it's everything. You genuinely care and you, you have the foresight to intentionally show up and do something about something that doesn't feel right is everything. And that's where I, as cliche as it sounds, really have faith in our world moving forward because it's stuff like that that's going to make the difference. Yeah, I hope so. And I, I, I'm on a streak because I, I swear to God, every time I talk about this, I like somehow sob on camera oh. it's, and it's not, so it's not getting any easier. Um, but you know, I can't, it's not like I can stop talking about this stuff. It's just, it's really important. Dude. I love it. This is so huge. It's for Ukraine. It's everything, but I don't know your whole, your whole trajectory of where you take your purpose, your mission, your career, I don't know, this might be leading to something else. I mean, it's clearly your heart. So you're in alignment with what you're supposed to be doing. And it's so deeply authentic. I know you'll be a fabulous leader. You are a fabulous leader in it because people will want to cultivate and be a part of your army of good. Um, so I'm, dude, I'm rooting for you. I can't wait to see kind of what's next, where this goes. I'm serious because it's, we need people like you doing stuff like this. And that is what is going to have long-term change for our young people. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad. And I think your daughter spontaneous sleeper is, uh, <laughs> really, really lucky. His daughter, I, we keep up obviously on Facebook because I'm a wannabe millennial, but, um, she would take random naps and it was like the best picture. Cause you would be like, yeah, in the middle the of Target, asleep yeah. On the floor. yeah, she would just lay it down <laughs> anywhere, like on the floor, in the department store, um, in the street, <laughs> on top of a picnic table, on top of a play structure. Like when she felt the urge to nap, she would just lay down and nap. 
I kind of like that attitude, actually. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I think what you do as a young human, like is indicative of what you do when you're older. So she might invent like a crazy portable mattress or a portable sort of- <laughs> mattress. I like that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> like there's like design in the work early that shows, but um, I have no doubt when she's awake, she's inspired by what you guys are doing as parents. It's a super, super thank you. Deal. I appreciate you saying that. It means a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, obviously Jonathan is out here doing good. Where do we find where you guys are at? How do people get involved? Like hit us with all the details. Yeah, sure. I mean, so the easiest place is just the website. It's palettesforukraine.com, all spelled out. Um, And that's got information about if you want to buy a flag, how you can do that. Um, If you're interested in volunteering, how you can do that. Um, We we honestly haven't set up any social media or anything like that because we just haven't had the time to do it. Uh, so maybe that will happen, but, um, but so far the website is, is where everything is. And that's, that's working really well. Amazing. And what is, what is the biggest need? Obviously I know money is always cash is uh, queen, as we'll say, what is, what else is helpful for you guys? Uh, paint. So, okay. um, so we, we, we've had tons of paint donated, but occasionally we still have to go in and purchase uh, the paint just with, with our own money. Cause we really want to stick to that every cent that somebody contributes goes to these charities. So when we need to buy supplies like paint, uh, occasionally we still have to use our money and it does get expensive. Um, the, the color match paint that we use is about 50 bucks a gallon. So when you're talking about 500 plus flags, obviously we tear through that pretty quick. So I would say best way to support is buy a flag and put it proudly out front of your house. Um, second best way would be consider, you know, buying us some paint or donating some paint, something like that. And then if you're inspired to uh, volunteer with all that paint comes the need for painters to, <laughs> to help. Um, so uh, yeah, if you have a, if you have an interest in helping out with the paintbrush, that's great too. I love it. Do you guys get together on like a Saturday? Are you having people kind of do it on their own or what's like the operations? Yeah. So uh, almost always on the weekends we've been doing, we've been working on this. Um, but then a lot of the time in the evenings, like I'm going for my dad and dad's place and helping out. Um, my dad is retired. His wife is retired. My mom is, is re- they're all retired, right? You know, both sets of parents. And so they've been going over there a lot during the day, during the week and working on things. And, um, a lot of, so there's a lot of volunteers that are still coming during the week. Um, side note to this project is that both my sets of parents have been working together almost nonstop. Like my, my mom and her husband, my stepdad, Mitch, and then my dad and my stepmom, um, Vicky, they have been collaborating yes. on this since the start. It's been amazing to see. Oh, I, again, you see this, you, you show up something to be good, intentional for someone else. And then somehow that good transfers into you, into your world in ways um, that you never know. But that's amazing. My parents are also divorced uh, and they are amicable, but I think maybe some Ukrainian flags are good for everybody's family, divorced <laughs> yeah, or not. So we'll also put that <laughs> prescription out there. Um, but that's amazing. Well, please also tell them, I said, hello, they may or may not remember me, but m- oh, they'll remember and- <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Olson slash O'Doyles. Um, we were out here, but that's, that's so awesome. So many positive effects off again, intentionally showing up for someone and something else. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Note. Um, anything else you want to share about the charity, anything you've learned or wise words or anything on your heart? Uh, no, I mean, I think we covered all the important stuff. I, if I was just going to make one request, it would be to be a helper, you know, do what Mr. Rogers says and be a helper. Don't be somebody that looks back and says, yeah, when that terrible thing was happening, I did nothing. Don't be that person. Amen. So well said. I completely agree from uh, Mr. Rogers to Jonathan, to the rest of the world. I, I love it. I appreciate it. I got to come pick up my flag. I will post all the details and things. I might know some paint people that we can, we'll see where else we can help like facilitate some things. Sure. Um, but also look for Jonathan on, um, all your local news, you're getting phenomenal. Your influencer status is going up by the day. So (laughs) be be looking for him and what he's doing. I'm super excited. I think more attention is going to come in. Um, and if you're hearing this, please spread the good word. Is it okay if people reach out to you directly, um, at your info at email, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. So the email is info at uh, pallets for ukraine.com and anybody can send me an email anytime I like. There you go. We'll go find Jonathan. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll have this out ASAP um, and we'll keep in touch. Sounds good, Kristen. Thank you so much for having me on. This has been fun. Thank you.
Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. 